Good to see him over here running. Hopefully he could run for him to come. The names on this second page here. Alameru, Chet Kokim and Kim Siro, Gabriel, who will be the biggest change. And of course Jayla, who beat Mo Farah in a big year last year, but didn't manage to get to run in the Olympics after having qualified after getting injured just before the Olympics. Twelve and a half blocks of the track and there will be cheers I'm pretty sure for most of the next 13 minutes or so. And chatting to Mo this morning he was uh, his usual laid-back self and really looking forward to this he's been of course over this last week or so he flew into Gateshead just a day before that event and that 50.89 last lap reverberated around the distance world when they saw that he was he did look like a an 800 meter runner a 1500 meter runner kicking so hard and that's what these guys have got to work out how to do they've got to work out we know Mo Farah we know that he when he's in shape he can run the good times but we know what he's best at is finishing the race better than anyone else so what can they do today to mess him up and look what he's doing already he's controlling this because the pacemakers are going up at the fast pace and Mo's going well you follow them if you want to because I'm not that bothered I've come here to win this well, a lot of the crowd here will really have seen Mo Farah lose before they were so used to seeing him winning and uh, seeing him win last week in Gateshead with that almost comical start to his final 400 meters but this is a very very different prospect today the uh, pace is supposed to take it out about 63 64 seconds yeah. uh, for first 400 meters and that's the kind of pace they're looking for but the caliber of the athlete in here uh, Mo Farah I don't think he's going to be able to boss it it's going to be a very very interesting race already it's becoming a little bit strung out and Farah quite happy to sit in the middle of proceedings at the moment well that's because the people he's most worried about are behind him he's had a quick look at see who's gone past him he's got Chepkov just in front of him but those the main contenders if you like the guys who's gonna be most worried about are running behind Mo Farah so he'll be happy with a nice solid pace just settling into the rhythm of the race in these early few laps and then he'll be leaving it up to the others I think to decide what to do once the pacemakers go once the, the uh, top two who are out there their job is to take them to at least to well, hopefully to 3,000 meters certainly Katimba's capable of doing that and then of course it's that four thousand meters where often these races drop off and then we end up with the last 600 meter maybe 800 meter real sprint for the line and of course we know they should know who nine times out of ten if not more than that is the best in the world and that's Mo Farah so Gebri Wet, Jaylan happy at the moment to sit behind him well this is slow by their standards slow by the sort of shape I know that Mo Farah is in and indeed Gebri Wet, Jaylan is coming into sort of good shape of course the Ethiopians just getting onto their team stuff and look at Collis Birmingham and he's thinking come on guys I thought I'd come in here for a, a big fast race here it isn't happening Chepcock finally decides let's get things moving a little bit and he can kick as well Chepcock he was as I said was out kicked by Gabriel but actually he just ran away from him in uh, New York didn't really out kick him but the ones who would think about winning this race the ones who would think about you know, how do we come up with a plan that we could maybe have a go at today see how we come off that and maybe work towards Moscow a way of beating the Olympic champion as we see a 67 lap there then I w I'm not sure this is the plan that I would want to unfurl because the longer this pace just settles nicely the, the more it plays into Mo Farah's hands but with four laps to go as Gebri Uet moves to the front this is the first time we've seen somebody think okay but look at that You're just moving on to his shoulder and all Mo will do is he's not, he's not going to give up the lead at this point whoever comes around the outside he'll just pick it up a little bit and then if they don't push on he'll slow down again so that's what he's done Jay Lan there now they thought okay maybe something's starting but it's not and the Maru's there in third place Gebri Uet now on the inside Collis Birmingham still sitting there in fact everybody's still sitting there and Mo is very very clever at this almost a little stumble behind in the pack but until somebody really puts their foot down there's a lot of pushing and shoving as they come around three laps to go and uh, their pace really dropping over 70 seconds now a little bit of a, a steadying hand from Farah 
Yeah, Mo just saying, look, hang on a minute, you know, you're going to come around like you're going to the front, fine, put your foot down, but don't just come down and run slow in front of me. So he tried to move back through on the inside, never he went, got his elbows out, so Mo thought, right, okay, I'll go around the other side. He wants to be exactly where he is. If he's not on the curb, then he's just sitting there nicely. You don't want to give up control at this point with a 1,000 metres to go. Two and a half laps. And this is going to be a real burner. This is going to be a test of speed. And if any of them have got more speed than Mo Farah showed in Gateshead last week, well, good luck to you. Well, I wonder, I wonder if someone like Jalen still believes he was the one who outkicked, as we mentioned, outkicked Mo Farah. But that was back in 2011. That was a lifetime ago in Mo Farah's career that Jalen outkicked. And now, now it changes. It's Tomo, Chris Thompson, Mo Farah's pal who is thinks well come on let's uh, give a bit of a go here and isn't that crazy that it's the other brit who decides to have a go gabri uet mo farah then we've got just on the outside of collis birmingham alameru kip two on the inside kip zero there jay lan has gone out the back door pretty quickly so that's a bit of a surprise and look at chris thompson look mo still mo knows he can catch chris so he's not even trying yet but look at this mo doesn't want to kick too hard too soon Gabri Hewitt just being tested and wants to move out. He wants a good position to be able to attack here and trying to mess Mo Farah up for the first time. So they go around Chris Thompson. Yes. This will be a little bit Please. different because Mo yeah. likes to be on the curb, likes yeah. to be on the inside, surrounded by Kip 2, Kip 0. Yes. Gabri Hewitt on the inside, Alamaru on the outside. Jaylan adrift of this group now. And Mo, for the second time, tries to take the lead. And again, Gebri Hewitt holds him off. And once more for Mo Farah, he wants to be in the front of the bell. He wants to be on the curb. Gebri Hewitt won't give it up. The three of them starting to pull away from the rest. These are the two dangers. These are the two men who won on the circuit. These are the two youngsters who Ethiopia think can take on Mo Farah at the World Championships. Gebri Hewitt holding the inside, the world junior record holder, the Olympic champion on his shoulder. Alan Maru trying to stay with them down the back straight. The gear starting to be shifted through now. Mo Farah doesn't want to let Alan Maru come on the outside. Gebri Hewitt trying to hold the inside. And Farah takes the initiative. And now he moves to the front. He hasn't been able to come across Gebri Hewitt yet. And Alan Maru right on his shoulder. This is going to go all the way to the wall. Yeah, we started. Oh, gets it again. Look at this. Touche. You cannot take him on in the last 600 meters. If they did not know that already, goodness me, do they know it now? They've got to find a different way to beat him. They were good. They, they really were good. They really pushed hard. And Farah had to dig deep. He had to find every ounce of speed and strength and endurance and energy that he could muster up. That is quick. Really, really quick. And he knows he was in a race there. But he did what he had to do, Andrew, and this was really interesting. He couldn't get where he wanted to do, but he didn't panic then. And Gabri Hewitt did everything he could to hold him off. A race that more than lived up to his billing and just picking up over the last last uh, two laps. But uh, Gabri we thought he might be the main threat. Alain Maru, though, tremendous effort from Alain Maru. But Father, that was, that was a real pleasure. I'm looking forward to the the rematch in Moscow, perhaps, in, uh, in a couple of months' time, because Alain Maru took tremendous speed, and you say 25, just under 26 seconds, the last 200. This was serious stuff. It was a sort of comedy final lap in Gateshead from Mo Farah, but this was the real deal, and he's shown us that he is still, he is still the main man, the man to beat. I love that little look across, as if to say, you're kidding me. We're flat out here, and Mo just got that little bit extra surge, didn't he, with about 70 to go. He won in the end by about half a second. And nobody has finished races as well as he does. You know, nobody does this better than Mo Farah. And if he just continues keeping himself, getting in good shape, and he keeps this speed, then, of course, we hope we're heading for a great summer with Mo in Moscow. He's with Phil now.